Yes, you made it back for the complex shapes. I knew those first ones would be too easy for you. Um, so to shake it up a little bit. We're going to increase the degree of difficulty for our equations. As you can see, now we're going to talk in three dimensions, whereas before we were just working in two. We now have our x, our y, and our z dimensions. We are going to have a centroid location for the x, centroid for the y, centroid for the z, and uh, if you're a little scared, don't worry, we're actually not going to deal much with the z right now. Um, this equation may look, look daunting here at the beginning, but keep in mind, those are just symbols that represent numbers. So let's quickly go over this and we'll refer back to it. To find your centroid location, how far you need to go over in the x dimension, what you've got to do is you've got to find the sum of all your x centroids multiplied by the area of that shape. Divide that number by the sum of all the areas. This big E looking thing, that's the Greek letter sigma. It means the sum of. So you take all the x centroids times the areas and add them all together. Sum of all the areas, you take the areas of all the different shapes and add them together. So basically we'll come back to that, but what we're going to do is we're going to take shapes like this. We're going to divide it into parts that we can solve for, and then we will add them all together. Um, so Let's walk through this uh, systematically. So the first thing we're going to do is divide it into simple shapes. So we took this complex shape here and devoted, divided it into three shapes, a rectangle, a triangle, and a square here. So this is sort of where you have to use a little bit of creativity and figure out which shapes are going to work best for you. Um, I think all of these are pretty straightforward since we talked about them yesterday, and you should be able to solve this with no problem. The second thing we need to do is determine our reference axis. And that, for example, is going to be this origin right here. Uh, everything that we measure, we're going to have to measure off of that x, y, 0 spot. Um, if you guys come on into SIM next year, then we'll, we call that the uh, WPS or the datum point when we're talking about milling. So lots of fun stuff there. At any rate, uh, in order to do centroid location, you've got to know how to calculate area. Hopefully you guys talked about this in geometry or IED somewhere, 7th grade, 6th grade, 5th grade, 12th, or 2nd grade, whenever you do area. Area of a square, area of a rectangle, circle, and base, those are all on your equation sheet. Know that they're there. Um, you should be able to do that, no problem. So, how do we do this? First thing that we're going to do is we're going to calculate the area of each simple shape. So, area 1 was this rectangle. 3 inches by 6 inches, 18 square inches. Area 2, this triangle is 1 half of base times height. So 1 half, still 3 inches across here, times 3 inches tall. Oh, this is getting in trouble. He's barking outside. No, I did not go get him, so I'm making this video for you guys. You should feel very important. Um, and then the area of shape 3 is a square, 3 inches on either side. 3 times 3, so 9 square inches. So now we have the area of all three shapes, area one, two, and three. We'll have to reference back to those in just a little bit. I would encourage you to do this on a piece of paper as we walk, work through it. If you need to, pause it here, get caught up, and then jump back in. Now that we have the areas, we need to go and find our centroid location. So we'll start with shape one, finding the centroid location of uh, this rectangle, and so you can see that it has two lines of symmetry, so it, the centroid will be right where those two lines intersect. The basic rectangle, we're three across uh, the base, and three on the height, or sorry, excuse me, six on the height, so it's going to be one and a half and three. To do the uh, square, same thing, half and half, two lines of symmetry, so we'll find that at one and a half, one and a half, and this one we do third of the base, third of the height. So over one and up one, because these are both three on each side. Uh, so those are the centroid locations for each shape. you got to be careful. Here's the trick, because we don't actually use those numbers. We established our reference points. This is zero, zero. So we have to measure those centroid locations off of this zero, zero position. What's that mean? Well, this rectangle right here is sitting on the zero, zero. So 
the xy coordinate pair for this one is actually going to be 1.5 and 3 because it's cornered at this 0, 0. However, the centroid of this square right here, remember it was at 1.5, 1.5 when we use this square as the reference frame. However, this square is not sitting at the 0, 0. So in order to get to this centroid location, we must first travel an x distance of 3 to get all the way over here, and then another 1.5 to get to here, which gives us an x coordinate of 4.5. Since it is sitting on the y-axis, or excuse me, the x-axis, we only have to come up 1.5. So the x-y pair for this one is going to be 4 and a half, 1 and a half. And lastly, for this guy up here, notice it's not sitting on the x or the y-axis. So we have to measure again from this origin. And so we'll have to come over 3 inches plus another 1 to get to 4, 4 inches for our x. And we're also going to have to measure up 3 inches plus another 1. And it'll be 4 inches up the y. So this xy coordinate for this centroid location is 4, 4. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we've got our xy uh, coordinate pair for each of the three centroid locations. And we know the areas of each of the three shapes. And so we can go back to our equation and build these little charts here. <clears throat> so notice, shape 1. And this is a lot here. I'd encourage you to jot this chart down and practice this. Um, come back and reference this video if you need to. Shape 1. The area was 18 square inches. It's x centroid was 1.5. And then when we had to find our area times the x centroid, we did 18.0 times 1.5. Remember from the equation, this is actually the value that we need right here. Um, so we take the x centroid, multiply it by the area to get this number right here. We do the same thing for shape 2, 4.5 times 4 square inches, or sorry, 4.5 square inches times 4 is our x coordinate, which gives us 18 cubic inches, 9 times 4.5, 40.5. So in this uh, chart right here, all we're doing is we're finding the area times the centroid location for each of the three shapes in the x dimension. And then we're doing the same thing again in the y dimension. So you might want to pause it here, take a look at this, make sure you see how these numbers calculate out. Take some time to think about this chart. These charts are not given to you on the equation sheet, but they do make the process a lot easier to manage. Now, the next step is we find the sum of the products of each simple shape's area and their distances from the centroid of the axis. So remember, shape 1, 27, 18, uh, and 40.5 for 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Those are these numbers from the previous chart. And we're just going to add those numbers together. Because remember, it said the sum of the area times the x centroid. When we add those three numbers, we get 85.5, which is just a number. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just a number. And then we're going to do the same thing for the areas times the y, which is what we got from this section of the chart on the previous slide. So now we have these two numbers. Coincidentally here, they end up to be the same. They will not always be the same. When you see that they're the same, that should lead you to believe that we have some lines of symmetry within this shape. Um, just a little heads up there, but coincidentally they add up to be the same, in this, but it's not always going to be. Next, what we got to do is sum the individual shape areas to determine the total shape area. So areas 1, 2, and 3, 18 plus 4.5 plus 9 square inches, this is this number. Now, the sum of the areas will be the same for the x and the y, because it doesn't matter if we're measuring x's or y's, the area is still the same. Um, so the uh, denominator here will be the same for both x and y centroid locations. So now, we've done all these calculations, we've added this thing up, this, this is a huge process that we're going through. 
So now we're going to go back to that initial equation that I said. Right? So these are the three things we just found out. 85 and a half cubic inches, 85 and a half cubic inches, and the sum of the areas was 31 and a half square inches. So to find the centroid location, remember, the equation originally said it's the sum of the areas times x centroid, which is this number, divided by the sum of the areas, 3.71 inches. Inches cubed on top, inches squared on bottom, so we're left with inches on the top. And for y, we do the same thing. Sum of area times y divided by the sum of the areas. And we get 2.71, 2.71, um, which in turn tells us the centroid of this complex shape. We go over 2.71 inches and then up 2.71 inches. And that's where our centroid location is. When you look at it, you see we do have this line of symmetry right here is nice and that's why we have this these numbers in both the same of 2.71 inches uh, in both x and y coordinates. So that is how you solve complex shapes. That's actually called the additive approach. There is an alternative solution um, where you do the subtractive method. So instead of looking at this as one, two, three shapes, now you're going to look at it as one big shape and then subtract this rectangle out of here. Um, I'll deal with that in the next video. So long.